what kind of leashes should you take with you if you're taking your dog on a beach vacation? Now, this is going to depend on how many dogs you have, what size your dogs are, your dog's personality, whether they want to go in the water or not, and what's going to work best for you. So I'm going to give you a bunch of options and you pick the best ones for you. I recommend at minimum, you bring two different kinds of leashes. I will tell you the two main kinds of leashes plus other ones that I recommend, but it depends on, again, your dog and your situation. And I do recommend that you're bringing backup leashes. If you were going to the beach, bring extra leashes, period. You don't know when you're going to need them, if you're going to need them, and you need to have them if you need them. I also recommend that as you are picking out what you're bringing, that you're bringing either waterproof leashes because they're probably going to get wet or sweaty or covered in sand or all of those things. And I recommend that you bring leashes that you're okay with having covered in salt water and sand and dog slobber and all of those other things. So if you have a leash that you love to use for your park walks or to use in your neighborhood, save that one. Save that one. You can bring it with you if you're taking your dog for a walk on the boardwalk or down to see the shops or whatever it happens to be. The normal walking side of things, Absolutely. But if you're stepping onto the sand and out toward the beach, bring leashes that you are okay, okay with being a little messy when you get them back. And waterproof leashes are incredibly helpful because you can wash them. You can rinse them off without them getting smelly or gross or whatever. So waterproof is definitely the vibe. So I recommend that everybody have two main types of leashes, and then I'm going to throw in a bonus type of leash. The first main leash is just a normal standard leash. You want it so that you can easily control your dog. This is something that you are going to see when you are out walking. You're going to keep them close by. I like this one because it is made of that tear resistant, chew resistant nylon fibers. It does have two traffic handles. So one is down near my dog. You can see that's where she clips on. This is where I am going to be able to grab onto my dog if I need to really control her. And then we've got that end as well. And it's got a D-ring up at the top so I can clip it onto other things, which is going to bring us to the bonus leash I'm going to tell you about in a few minutes. Remember, Remember this one. This is helpful. So you want to have a standardized leash that you can be taking with you. Again, waterproof, chew resistant, all those things going to be helpful. And that's going to allow you to safely walk with your dog on the beach. Now, I do recommend if you are going to the beach with your dog, you have your dog in a harness. And we can talk about this in another video. I recommend having them in a harness at the beach, period. And not maybe necessarily your normal walking leash or your hanging out um, harness that you're going to be using. Because again, it's going to get dirty. It's going to get wet, salt water, sand, all those things. But I, I will not take any of my dogs, period, to the beach without harnesses on. They will always have a harness on because I need to be able to control situations. There are other people who let their dogs off leash. There are other children that are going to run up to them. There are men that constantly will try to pet your dogs. It's a lot. There's a lot and I need to be able to control them. And if my dogs go swimming, I don't want them to like get carried away. I don't want to, if they get caught in like a little riptide or something, I do not want to be pulling on that leash to get them back and pulling on their neck. I want to protect their throats and their neck. So I always put them in a harness. They are clipped to a harness and that way it is pulling on their chest and on, on things that are not going to, you know, damage anything. So I always put my dogs in a leash and then I clip the leashes or I always put them in a harness and then I clip the leashes to them. So having the standard leash, very helpful. The second type of leash that I highly recommend that you have, no matter what type of dog you have, whether it is a teeny tiny dog, a medium sized dog, a big dog, a dog that wants to go in the water, a dog that wants to stay in the sand. And I have all of those. Okay. I've got two medium sized dogs and a little teeny tiny dog. And one of them loves the water and two of them, one of the, the little one doesn't like water. The middle girl is learning. <laughs> She's learning to like water. No matter what it is, I want you to have a long leash. You need a long leash. We're talking 30 foot, 40 foot leash. Do not skimp on the long leads. So this is just, I'm not going to unravel it because I don't need to do that for this video. You can't see all of it anyway, but this is a really nice long lead. Uh, it is, I think, 30 feet. And that way my dog can run and play. And I'm getting a longer one because this, this was not enough for my girl who loves the water. This one loves the water. And so you can clip this again to their harness and you can just let them go. This has a padded handle. So you can see it's got a plastic handle in here. This is how I travel with it. So I wrap it up just like this, pop it into a bag and I'm good to go. It's water resistant. It floats on water. It's chew resistant. So if she does go out swimming right now, she's uh, playing on the edge, going in as far as like me going up to my knees. She doesn't go very far. She hasn't like actually tried swimming in the ocean yet because we've only gone when it was cold. And so 
When we go for real swimming, this will float on the water. It's reflective. I'll be able to easily see it. It's not going to get tangled on me or anybody else because it floats on the water. And this is going to allow her to go where she wants to go and to play. I've got so much video of her just running and playing and having fun. And it was not enough. She would run to the end and it, it kind of like jerk her back a little bit. So I'm going to get another one of these. Or maybe I will rig it up so I attach both of these because I have these for both of my bigger girls. And I'm just going to let her play the next time we go to the beach. She had so much fun with it. Have a long line. It doesn't have to be as heavy duty as this one. If you have a little dog, this is going to be too much. This is going to be heavy for them to drag. So get a version for little dogs. They then have the space to run and to play. Little dogs typically don't go in the water. So you were looking at them being able to run in the sand and chase the seagulls and go explore and chase the foam as it moves across the sand. That gives them the freedom to move, but the safety of being attached to you still. Now, I said that I had a bonus leash that I highly recommend, but it depends on your dog or dogs and you as a human. So We've got this bonus plus a bonus I'm going to give you on top of that. So the next one is a hands-free leash. I cannot say enough good things about my hands-free leash. It clips around my waist. It's right here. It clips around my waist. And so it's got padding on the back. It just clips around my waist the same way a fanny pack would. It has the attachments in the front. So it's got, it's got um, the little buckle here. And then it has the two D rings so that I can clip things to it. From there, it has a lead attached to it. Traffic handles, padded traffic handles are included in this one. More D rings so I can clip things on if I need to. And then it comes down to my coupler where, because I have two dogs, this is a dual dog leash. Now you can get them for single dogs. You can get them for dual dogs. But no matter how they spin, they're not going to be tangled. It's got traffic handles down near those clips. The downside to this is that if you have the dual leash, they don't have a ton of space. So I actually talked about this in another video. I got an extender. That way I can just clip on that extender and double their space so that they are not, um, like if someone of them stops to take a body break and the other one doesn't realize that they're not like jerking each other. They are not uh, going around me and tangling me in a way that is difficult for me to get out of. So I can easily step over the double lead. It's harder on the single lead. And so it gives us more space to be able to function, do the things that we need to do. I cannot say enough good things about the hands-free leash. However, and this is where the, you know, you need to be responsible for you section of this video comes in. A hands-free leash means that you are strapped into this leash. It is around your waist. And if anything happens, you are still attached to it. So if you have a big dog, if you have a strong dog, if you have a reactive or fearful dog, and that dog is going to bolt and you cannot stand your ground, if you are not physically capable of standing your ground, don't wear this because it's not going to be good for you. We have to make sure that you are not going to get hurt. So you have to be smart enough to be able to know when you can and cannot be using these. I am somebody who is um, physically trained enough that my two dogs, my very strong two dogs cannot pull me over. If they do, I have to be smart enough to unclip that and get myself out of there. But my dogs are not capable of pulling me over unless some huge surprising thing happens. If you do not have the physical capacity to do it, don't do this. It can be dangerous. Likewise, you have to be careful how you're holding leashes because if it's around your wrist, you could get dragged as well. So you just have to be mindful and you have to be careful. But it is so incredibly helpful because if they're excited and they're running on the beach and they're doing things, they're trying to go in different directions, it's very easy to pull leashes out of your hands. It's very easy for that to happen. And if they then take off to go do something, you now have to catch that dog and hope everything is okay. So I like being able to have this as a hands-free leash. It also helps me as a, a dog mommy who really likes to take videos of her puppies so that I can hold on to it with one hand without having to worry about anything happening because it's still attached to my waist and I can hold my phone on the other and I can take my content and take my photos and all of the things. And so it's really, really helpful for me just to have that extra layer of security. Now, as I'm wearing this hands-free leash, for the most part, I am still very much attached to this. I am holding on to those traffic handles. I very rarely let go and just let them go unless I need both of my hands to do something like fix part of the backpack if it is falling off or uh, like taking on or off my shoes when we're walking on or off of the beach, like occasionally creating content. I am almost always still with my hands attached to this leash to make sure I'm controlling what's going on. And because they have the traffic handles up at the top, down a little bit lower, and by each individual dog, it gives me much more control depending on what I'm going to need. If I need to back a dog up, both of the dogs up, 
whatever it happens to be. I also attach my long leash to it. So I take, I've taken this long 30 foot leash, attached it. I jerry rigged it up to my, my hands free belt. And I just let my dog go. And that way she can run and play and I can be watching her and be mindful of all the things. But if she gets real excited and she goes, we're running after those birds, and she gets to the end and it kind of jerks out of my hand. It's still attached to me. She can't go anywhere. If something happens where she's like out in the water and I got to get her back, it's still attached to me. I'm not slipping as I am pulling on that leash to retrieve her from the water should something happen. So I like it because it's added security for me, but it depends on who you are and who your dogs are. And like I said, those extenders, game changers. These are fantastic. So this is your bonus bonus. These are fantastic for extending your dual dog leash with the coupler. This is fantastic for extending um, just your single leashes if your dog needs a little more space. If you don't want to buy a long lead, you want to buy a couple of these and clip those on, by all means, these are multifunctional. This is also really nice. I talked about this in the other video that you can attach this to your car seat belts if they are not quite long enough for your dogs. I have seat belts. I have six seat belts. Actually, I have more, but I have six seat belts in my two cars. So three for each of my three dogs in each car. And in the one car, the one type of seat belt, because they're different, they're different cars, different styles of seat belts to accommodate the style of car. Um, is it's just not long enough for my little dog. It's very, very tight. It's hard for her to like lay down and move around. So I've been putting two seat belts together for her. This is so much less dramatic and that gives her more space and it allows her to do more things. It's not, it's not as much of a problem. So this is also going to be going in the car permanently attached to that one seatbelt for the tiny dog so that she can ride more comfortably, but still be safe as we go. So I highly recommend you are bringing no less than two leashes, a normal standard leash and a long, long leash so that your dog can play. I recommend waterproof and chew resistant and things that float on water so that you can easily clean it and you can easily find it while you are out on the beach. Please be aware the more traffic handles that a leash has, the more control you are going to have. Your long leads will not have traffic handles, meaning you're going to be stuck trying to tug on that single leash and you could potentially get a little bit of rope burn from that depending on what you're doing and how tough your dog is pulling. And I recommend that you bring extra leashes. You do not know when you're going to need them. I have leashes dedicated to my dogs to go to the beach that can get wet, that can get icky, is not my normal stuff. I have dedicated harnesses, again, because it's going to get icky and I need to make sure that they're safe on the beach um, and they're not bringing that sand back into their normal walks where it's going to be gritting against their skin. And so I have dedicated beach leashes, long and short. I have extras. I keep extras in my dog bag that I carry with me all the time when we're out and about. I have extras in my car. I have extras that I bring into the hotel hotel room backups. You do not have to get expensive or fancy kinds of these. They can be very cheap and easy for you to grab. You just need to have them in case you need them, in case anything happens, in case the worst happens, you've got them. There's a lot of things that you need to know about taking your dogs to the beach. So if you've got questions, go ahead and drop those down below. We are dropping daily videos to help you navigate your dog parent life and your travel life with your dog. So get those questions down below, follow along for more product reviews and suggestions on how you can level up what you're doing as a pet parent so that you can live your best likely pop. We'll see you in the upcoming episodes.